In this lesson we're going to look at the thermal expansion of gases and compare that with the thermal expansion of solids and liquids which we've already looked at. Let's just remind ourselves what happens when we heat either a solid, liquid or a gas. Okay, so when heat is supplied to any of the three states of matter, the particles present in each state will acquire more kinetic energy. That means that the particles will move faster and as a result of them moving faster they will expand. OK, so this will happen whether the substance is a solid, liquid or gas. When heat is supplied, when the temperature increases, there will always be an expansion and the volume will increase. But what we'd like to point out here is that there is quite a big difference between the expansion in gases compared to that in solids or liquids. To help us see the difference. Let's just take a simple example. What we're going to do is take a solid, a liquid and a gas and we're going to change the temperature by 30 degrees Celsius for example. There, so let's take a steel rod, a bottle of water and some air in a syringe. So what's going to happen to the volume of these three when we increase their temperature by 30 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Kelvin. Now you can go away and look up on the internet for example the thermal coefficient of expansion of steel and of water you know and you can do the calculations yourselves. What I want to do here is just use these examples to help you see the difference between the expansions of the three different states of matter. So in the case of the steel rod roughly a 30 degrees change in temperature will cause an increase in length of about 0.036%. Right? We'll just write, make a note of that. We'll write down here, 0.36, sorry, 0.036%. Okay, increase in length. Now the water will expand by a greater amount than the steel. It will expand by about 0.6%, but that's still not a very large percentage increase. But the gas, however, the air in the syringe, with a 30 degrees change in temperature, would increase by about 10%. Okay, assuming obviously that we've covered the hole on the syringe, all right, uh, that results in approximately a 10% increase in volume. So gases expand a lot more than liquids or solids. Now, how do we explain this? Now, to do that, we've got to go back to the particle model. And I just want to do a kind of rough qualitative explanation. We don't need to get into too much detail here. But it's important to understand the differences between the three. OK, so what actually makes a solid liquid or gas expand? Well, it's the increase in the kinetic energy given to the particles. This is what makes them move faster and this is what makes them expand. But the important point is this, is that when you supply heat to these three, in the case of the solid and the liquid, not all of that heat is actually transferred to the kinetic energy of the particles. The reason for this is, is because there are quite large cohesive forces holding the particles together. These are clearly strongest in the solid uh, but they are also present in the liquid. As a result of that the energy supplied to the solid and liquid will also be stored in the form of elastic potential energy so it won't just be transferred into kinetic energy. If you think about the solid for one moment to help you understand this, you can imagine that the solid is made up of particles which are held together by springs. The particles are vibrating constantly in three dimensions and so it's a kind of complex three-dimensional array of particles held together by springs. Now at any one time as those particles are vibrating they will possess both kinetic energy and elastic potential energy stored in the springs. So when this heat is supplied to a solid or to a liquid, quite a lot of this energy is stored as elastic potential energy within the solid or within the liquid and only some of it gets transferred into kinetic energy. Now it is the kinetic energy which results in the expansion 
of the solid or in the liquid. Okay. Okay, so let's just make a note of this. So some of the heat is transferred to kinetic energy. That's what makes the solid expand. The fact that the particles are moving faster. Okay, but quite a lot of it gets transferred into elastic potential energy which is present as a result of the cohesive forces which hold the particles together in the solid and also in the liquid. Now in the gas we're assuming here that it's an ideal gas right, and that there are no cohesive forces acting between these particles. So the problem of the elastic potential energy isn't there. In other words, when we supply heat to the gas, then all of this heat will be transferred into kinetic energy. And as a result, then, there will be a much greater expansion because the kinetic energy is what results in the particles moving faster, which is what causes the expansion. So just to summarize again, the fact that a gas expands much more than a liquid or a solid is because there are large spaces between its particles and therefore we can assume that in the case of the ideal gas that there are no cohesive forces acting between the particles. So there is no way that any of this heat energy can be stored as elastic potential energy as it can do, for example, in the solid or in a liquid.